Okay. Good evening. This is Pastor Lou Burns of Abundant Life Baptist Church in Naugatuck, Connecticut. And we are here for Genesis chapter 41, Dreams for God's Purpose. As we recall from previous weeks, uh, Jacob, Jacob's son Joseph, he had 12 or 11 sons at the time. And his son Joseph was a very good son. And Joseph was sent out to be among his brothers. And his brothers did not like him because he brought back evil report. He, he told his father truthfully what they were doing. And they were not doing what they were supposed to be doing. And he came back and he had a dream. God gave, gave Joseph a dream, actually two dreams. And the dreams showed Joseph that one day his brethren would have to bow down to him. And they scoffed and they laughed and they, they hated him because he was Jacob's favorite he had a special coat of many colors. And they sold him into slavery, as we saw last week. They sold him, and he became sold into Egypt, into slavery. And God was with him all the way. Throughout that time, and he was accused falsely, and being accused falsely, he was thrown into prison. And God was still with him. God moved his, the, the, prison, the prison keeper to put Joseph in charge of all the things in the prison. As his previous owner, Potiphar, the captain of the guard had also put him in charge of all that he owned because God, he recognized God's hand upon Joseph, even in the most terrible of times. And he saw that he also gave Joseph the ability to interpret a dream. He gave Joseph dreams of his own, though he didn't really understand them. And he gave him the ability to interpret dreams that we saw last week. So in chapter 41, and it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed and behold, he stood by the river. He had this dream. He was Pharaoh, king of Egypt, was dreaming that he was standing beside the river, which is the Nile. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine and fat flesh, and they fed in a meadow. So he sees seven beautiful beautiful animal, ready for food. And they were feeding and getting fat. And then in verse 3, he, And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kind on the brink of the river. They were skin and bone, if you will ill-favored, lean flesh. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke. This is a pretty strange dream. First he sees animals that are, you know, that are ready, ready to be killed and eaten. And then all of a sudden, we have the 
ill-favored kind. And the ill-favored kind and lean-fleshed kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind, and Terry woke up. Well, I'd wake up too. And then he slept and dreamed the second time, and behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. These were big, fat ears of corn. As many of us here in America love our corn in season, right on the cob, big, fat kernels. Seven ears of corn came up on one stalk. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wing sprung up, east wind sprung up after them. And the seven, e the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. He sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Well, three things about that in Scripture. Number one, this, was, this had a purpose. And he was able to remember everything about the dream. And being an Egyptian and superstitious and not having God, what did he do? His, you know, he's, I've had this nightmare twice, different kinds, but twice I've had a nightmare. And the spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt. And all the wise men, and Pharaoh told them, but there was none that could interpret the dream, because God didn't give them the interpretation. He closed their eyes to it and their minds to it. We go to Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7 and verse 11. Exodus chapter 7 and verse 11. Pharaohs of Egypt love calling their sorcerers. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments, talking about what Moses had shown. And verse 22. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. Moses was there. God gave him things to do. Plagues upon Egypt. And what did he do? He called for his sorcerers and his magicians and their enchantments. We go to the book of Daniel. Go to the book of Daniel, chapter 2. Daniel, chapter 2, and verse 1 and 2. In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they, show, they came and stood before the king. He called all of these various people, the wise men, but they could not interpret Nebuchadnezzar's dream, which was also given to him by God. We move on to Daniel chapter 4 and verse 5. I saw a dream which made me afraid and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. And on down to verse 19 of chapter 4 in Daniel. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour and his thoughts troubled him. 
The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream nor the interpretation of them thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. He had bad news to, to tell. He had bad news to tell. The king. Now here, here Joseph was in a different position. Because he had bad news, but he also had good news. But none of the magicians, none of the wise men would interpret the dream. Verse 9 of chapter 41, Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. <coughs> Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in ward and the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. He and the baker, we saw last week, had their dreams interpreted correctly by Joseph and Joseph said remember me unto Pharaoh well of course they didn't the butler did not remember him until this time go back to chapter 40 and verse 2 Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers and he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison in the, the place where Joseph was bound and we saw last week where joseph interpreted these dreams verse 11 chapter 41 we dreamed a dreamed in one night i and he we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream and there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man, according to his dream, did he interpret. We go back to Genesis 37 and verse 36 and remember. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, the officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. So that's where he was imprisoned. If we go back to Genesis chapter 40 and verse 12. Genesis chapter 40 and verse 12. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. He's interpreting their dreams as God showed him the interpretation. This is setting the stage for the most important interpretation. So in verse 13, And it came to pass, as interpreted to us, so it was, me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Joseph sent, and then Pharaoh sent, and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. He had to get ready quickly to be brought unto Pharaoh. He had to be in the Egyptians style and raiment to come unto Pharaoh but he readied himself because he knew that he would have to do what was necessary we go to the book of 1st Samuel 1st Samuel chapter 2 or Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8 speaking of the Lord he raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill 
to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. He can take you out of the worst place you can be and raise you up to do his will and his work that he has set aside for you to do. Doesn't matter where you were before. All that matters is that you will do the things that God has for you to do. We go on to Psalm chapter 105. Psalm 105. Verse 18. Psalm 105 in verse 18. Speaking of Joseph, whose feet they hurt with fetters, he was laid in iron until that time, um, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. If we go to Psalm 113, verse 7, Psalm 113, and verse 7. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, he lift and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill. Verse 8, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. If we go to Daniel, go back to Daniel chapter 2. Back into Daniel chapter 2 and verse 25. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. God gave Daniel the interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream as he had given Joseph the interpretation of Pharaoh's dreams. So going back to chapter 41 of Genesis. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that, interpret, that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. Yes. Yes. For this very purpose, the butcher and the baker were given the interpretation of their dreams. They were given their dream that, Daniel, that Joseph would be brought to Pharaoh to fulfill God's purpose. If we go to the Psalm 25. Go to Psalm 25. And verse 14. Psalm 25 and verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. The most important thing is to have that relationship with God, as Joseph did, as his father Israel did, and his grand, his great grandfather Abraham did, his grandfather Isaac. The relationship with God which in our day, today, can only be had through Jesus Christ. Coming to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior.
to give all to him and not worry about the world. No matter what's going on in your life, you have a question? Christ has the answer. Because he's God. Well, here in verse 16 of chapter 41 of Genesis. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. You're unsettled. You're afraid. It's not in me. He rightly answered. God will give. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. If we go to Acts, Acts chapter 3 and verse 12. The book of Acts in the New Testament, Acts chapter 3 and verse 12. Acts chapter 3 and verse 12. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? Miracle just happened. And the people are standing around saying, oh, this, look at Peter, look at these, look at these disciples. And Peter says, why marvel ye? It wasn't us, it wasn't our power, it wasn't our holiness, it was God working. God's work did this. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. It isn't us. But our sufficiency is of God. God has the power. God has the strength. And you can have strength too through Jesus Christ, through your relationship with God. So Pharaoh, back in 40, 41, chapter 41 of Genesis, verse 17. Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in the meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill-favored and lean-fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke, and I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good, and behold, seven ears, withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears, and I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it unto me. Now, let me say this here, because there are many people, even in this day and age, that fall for the charlatans, the magicians, if you will, the psychics, those who would say that they know a thing that they don't know. 
and cannot tell, because God has not revealed it unto them. That is just as bad as the magicians of Egypt, the wise men, so to speak. There was none that could declare it to me. True today as it was then. Go to Psalm 146, verse 3. Psalm 146 and verse 3. Put your trust, put not your trust in princes nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. Notice there's no capital S there. That's not Christ they're talking about. That's just an ordinary man, an ordinary person. Don't put your trust in princes or leaders in whom there is no help. If we go to Isaiah chapter 8, Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 19. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, And unto wizards that peep, that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Somebody's dead, they're dead. Not going to have any special knowledge for you or me or anybody else. Seek unto them that have familiar spirits and wizards that peep and mutter. Here's the truth of it. Should not a people seek unto their God? Seek what Jesus Christ has for you. Go ahead and look for what God has. We go on to Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 7. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Again, back in Babylon. Again, speaking to Daniel after he's tried everything else. Speak to Daniel, whom God can re will reveal. God has chosen him for that purpose, in that place. Let me go back. Here to verse 25. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. So Joseph is telling Pharaoh straight out, you've, you've just received a blessing because God has revealed to you what he is going to do in your time. And in a way, and he's provided someone to interpret for you so that this isn't going to just sneak up on you and destroy you. He's blessed you, Pharaoh. So those two dreams, they're all one. Showed you. Seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. And the dream is one, and the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind. shall be seven years of famine. These are the things 
God is showing you. You're going to have seven good years, and you're going to have seven bad years. If we go on to 2 Kings chapter 8, 2 Kings chapter 8, and verse 1. Then spake Elisha unto the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, and go thou and thine household, and so sojourn wherever thou canst sojourn. For the Lord hath called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven years. In Scripture, seven is a very important number. It shows up very frequently. As it's showing up here, seven good years, seven bad years of famine. And for in, in Kings, again, another seven years of famine. So this is the thing in verse 28 of chapter 41 which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, what God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and, f and the famine shall consume the land. This is what God is telling you. We go to Genesis chapter 47. Genesis chapter 47 and verse 13. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore. So the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. There was no food. There was no food to be had. Nothing was growing. Nothing was multiplying. So in verse 31, Verse 31. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following, for it shall be very grievous. There's not going to be food to be had. Nothing's going to grow. Very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. God has shown you exactly what he's going to do. And he's shown you for a reason. We'll see that momentarily, but if we go to Numbers... The book of Numbers, chapter 23. Book of Numbers, chapter 23, and verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of man that he should repent hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Believe what God has shown you. God has shown you for a reason, Pharaoh. This is what the dream is. This is what he has for you. Now in verse 33, he says, Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man, discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the, seventh, in the seven plenteous years. Here's why God gave you this dream, Pharaoh. 
And this is the key to Egypt's survival and relative success. Verse, if we go to Proverbs chapter 6, Proverbs chapter 6, starting in verse 6. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. Consider the ant that gathers all the food they can all summer long and stashes it away for all winter. Consider the ant. Verse 34. Verse 35, And let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities. Here's how you get this done, Pharaoh. You need, you need to make sure you have food set aside from the good years for the bad. We go to verse 48 of chapter 41. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in, city, in the cities. And the food of the, the food of the field, which was round about every city he laid up in the same. So let, let them gather up all that food. Store it up. Verse 36, chapter 41. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. That the land perish not. Could just as easily gone through everything in the in the good years and not set anything aside. There's a principle there. There's a principle there. You go to Genesis chapter 47 and verse 15. Genesis 47 and verse 15. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. You've stored up all this food, but we didn't store up our money to buy food during the famine. So verse 37. Verse 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And we find such a one? Is there anybody else who knew what was going to happen? Is there anyone else who knows the answer? Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a man? Go to Numbers chapter 27, please. Numbers chapter 27. And verse 18. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thy hand, thine hand upon him. God chose Moses' successor. He says, My Spirit is in him. He's the one. Well, Pharaoh has gotten the word. He understands. 
Can we find such a one as this? Verse 39, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Only in the throne. Everything else you handle. You've got the wisdom. You've got the Spirit of God in you. You take care of everything. You know what has to be done. You go ahead and do it. Go to Psalm chapter 105. Psalm 105. Psalm 105 and verse 21. He made him Lord of his house, the ruler of all his substance, to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Recounting the story of Joseph. Gave him wisdom. Gave him power. He went through all kinds of bad situations sold into slavery by his brothers to the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites sold him into Egypt, into Potiphar's house, falsely accused, thrown into prison. But God prospered him every step of the way because God had a job for him to do. But he had to go through the evil. Verse 41, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh took off his ring from, uh, from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, the best clothes in Egypt, and put a gold chain around his neck. I don't know if any of you have seen these Egyptian exhibits. But that's no small amount of gold. A gold chain around his neck. If we go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. And verse 13, better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished for out of prison he cometh to reign. Whereas also he that is born in his kingdom becometh poor. For out of prison he cometh to reign. Where also, also he that is born in his kingdom becometh poor. And if we go on to Daniel chapter 6, Daniel chapter 6, and verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. A lot of similarities here. Between Joseph and Daniel. Went through a lot of bad things. In verse 43. Verse 42. Pharaoh took off his ring. Gave him everything. We go back to the book of Daniel chapter 5 and verse 29. Daniel chapter 5 and verse 29. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Lasted one night. 
by the way. If you keep reading, read it. You can read that on your own. If we go to the book of Esther, the book of Esther, book of Esther in chapter 8, verse 2. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. Haman had been the advisor, the evil advisor. Esther was the queen. Mordecai was her uncle, who warned the king of evil to come. And in verse 8, he said, Write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring for the writing which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring may no man reverse. That saved the Jewish people. That saved the Jewish people. Read the book of Esther. Genesis chapter 41 and verse 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had, and they cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zepneth Paanea, and he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, the priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. He is ruler in all Egypt. Save the throne. This, this is what he needs. Joseph has been in slavery, been in prison, and now he's second in command of all Egypt because God had a purpose for him. He had to go through the trials to get to where God would use him in a mighty way in a heathen land. Mighty way in heathen land. So Joseph was 30. In verse 47, and he gathered... In the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. You couldn't go. There, there, there was so much food. There was so The crops were so good. And he gathered up all the food of, of the seven years, which are in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities, the food of the field, which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. All the food around, there was food laid up in those cities. There was plenty left. And Joseph let, gathered up the corn, gathered corn as the sand of the sea, very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. I don't know if any of you have had anything to do with counting things. There comes a time when it becomes useless. You just get to it. All right, there's, there's, there's more than enough. Don't worry about it. It was without number. None to Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bear unto him.
and the name of this Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God, saith he, said he, hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. I've forgotten all the bad things that have happened to me. All the things that I had to do that I should not have had to do. In the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Being fruitful. God has given him the ability all along as a slave, as a prisoner, and now 